one of the hard problems to deal with in computer vision and just machine learning and AI in general is overfitting. So in this video here, we're gonna talk about what overfitting is in computer vision, but also share a cool few tips and tricks on how you can actually prevent it, what we can do to go in and basically just have our models generalized better and not overfit on a specific data set. There could be many reasons why it's overfitting, your model is overfitting, could both be on the model side, could be on the data side as well, most often a combination of it as well, but we're also going to cover a few steps that you can do, both to regularize the model, but also some training and data set tips. So if you want to dive into more details, you can go through it here, but we're going to cover all of it in this video, step by step. So first of all, what is overfitting? It is basically just when a model basically just learn every single thing that we have in our data set. So it's not actually like learning patterns in our data, but it's basically just memorizing what we have in our data set. So let's say that we want to train on a specific dog or we want to be able to detect dogs in our images with our model that we're training from Autolytics. We could have a data set where we have one specific dog covered in that data set and then we train a model on it, but then we start to run it in production or an inference and we don't get any results. We can't really detect any dogs out there unless it is that specific dog that we had in our training set. So that basically just means that, okay, we're not really covering all the different edge cases, all the different situations, all the different types of dog in this exact example. Of course, this is a very basic one, but it basically just generalizes to any computer vision project application, what you can come up with that you're trying to build a data set for, train a model and solve a problem in the real world. So we need to have our data being representable of the problem that we're trying to solve. If we don't have enough data, our model is going to overfit on that specific example. Could also be that you have a production line and for this specific camera view here, you're detecting objects running on a conveyor belt. You get the detections, your model works nice, it works on your computer and so on, but then you try to scale it to other production lines even different manufacturers and so on as well, and you won't get any detections because your model has basically just memorized the exact thing that you have trained it to do instead of learn patterns. So when we want to do that, this is basically because we have limited training data. This is most often the case in a lot of computer vision applications and projects. It's very hard to find data. You need to generate it over time and so on. We never have perfect data, so it's very important that you work with the data Trash in is also trash out. Could also be complex models with too many parameters. Let's say that you have a few hundred images and you go for, I just want the best performance. I'm going to go with the YOLO extra large model or even just a large model. It will not be able to act like learn patterns in your data because it's simply just too big, too complex model with too many parameters to be able to learn from the few examples that you have. That's why it's so important to both focus on the model side, but also the data side when we see these patterns and we do overfit to our data. Could also be lack of data augmentation. If you only have a few hundred images, you can easily apply some data augmentation steps around it. We covered that in another video, but we basically just generate more data based on what we have. We can rotate some of our images. We can flip them horizontally, vertically. We can do some different lighting conditions so a model generalizes better and doesn't overfit to those examples that we have in our data set. Could also be prolonged training. So if our model hasn't converged yet, we're not fully done training. That could also be one of the factors, inconsistent and also noisy labels. Let's say that you're drawing like bounding boxes around specific uh, optics. It could be that you have a team labeling it and so on as well. If there's not consistency in your labels and also basically just a lot of noise, some images you're missing detection, some, some images you don't have the labels, other, other, other images you maybe have double labels around the person, it doesn't fit perfectly around the person and so on. So all these things also has an effect when we're talking about overfitting. So this is a very nice visualization that shows the difference between the optimum, so this is what we actually want our data to learn or our model to learn. Then we have underfit and also overfit. Underfit could actually be that we don't really learn anything. Our model doesn't really do any predictions. It's not learning enough from our training data. So that is actually like underfit. We see it doesn't really be able to distinguish. It can really categorize these two classes into two classes. That's most often because we haven't trained enough. Maybe we have too simple of a model, too hard of a data set. But again, we want to find a balance between underfitting and overfitting, and that goes 
right into the middle with the optimum and the perfect performance where we do we do miss a few examples here and there because it's not possible to get like 100% accuracy in every single example and then we have the overfit on the right side where we have high variance we have low training error and but we have high test error that basically just means that the test set that we're training it on the model has never seen that data before so we use the test set to go in and see how good how well does a model act like generalized on our data set we can have the best model i have a model that has 100 percent accuracy it performs so good it has the best training accuracy it has pretty much zero error in our training set and then you'll just end up with the example here on the right side once you start to fit, feed new data into it or anything that deviates edge cases deviates from your main data set that you're training the model on your model will perform very bad and you can see that directly from your test error so we want to both have low training error low test error they need to kind of like converge together when you look at the graphs from the training results you can also have high training error and high test error they will go together but your model won't really learn anything so now we know how to identify overfitting, what it is, then we actually need to go in and see how can we get around it, how can we share a few tips and tricks so we can have our models generalized better because we need this when we want to run it in production. Most often the big mistake people are making, they take a data set, they fine tune a model, they set up the whole application around that specific model and then it doesn't work when it gets out there because the lighting conditions change, the data is changing over time, you have data drift, data shift as well and you also even have your model doing shifting. So right now you can go in, add synthetic data, data augmentation, we covered this in other videos as well. We already do some of these steps to prevent overfitting in autolytics when you train directly, which is the default parameters. So that could be adding rotations, flipping, maybe you train on a car driving in this direction. You also want to be able to detect cars going in the other direction, but you don't have it in your data set. Then we can apply data augmentation to basically just flip the images, rotate them, change the lighting conditions so our model generalizes on that. Then, from, then you can go from a few hundred images to maybe a thousand images by just applying data augmentation. Optimize the model complexity and architecture. If you have a very small data set, go with a nano or small model. The other models, they look better. I have, they have higher accuracy on the Cocoa data set. You just forget that the Cocoa data set, it has tens of thousands of images, maybe even hundred thousand images. And if you don't have that in your data set, it's just too small a data set to train a hardcore complex model. Then you will even get way better performance with a nano model compared to a large model, even though you might think that large model is better than the nano version. So yeah, make sure that you fit, fit find the correct model complexity and also architecture based on the exact data set that you have and also problem that you're trying to solve. So Prodding speed is also a very important factor here, but right now we're just talking about are our model actually able to generalize well on our data and the real world use cases. We could go in, do a dropout where we basically just turn off like different random nodes here and there in our network. So that is a very good technique to go in and reduce overfitting as well because if we just memorize our data, it will basically just go in the weights will be the exact same all the way through. It doesn't really change that much. It just learns to memorize instead of generalize the weights. Then we can have weight decay. Basically just if you have extreme weight values, they're basically just going to be kept under control with this L2 regularization. Batch normalization, basically just pass in badges so we throw in a whole batch. Then we do the weight optimization before we do a back propagation and optimize each individual weight in our neural network that's also very good so definitely always have a bat size you can have 8 16 32 64 that's most often limited by your gpu ram then monitor training validation and early stopping and so on make sure when you start the training do you actually see your losses going down together maybe you already see early on that your yeah, that your training loss is just going down 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 your validation loss is not really following then instead of just wasting resources, you can stop the training, already start to use some of these tips and tricks that we have shared in this video. Most often when you do overfitting, it is because the model size and then the data set. So make sure you spend time on improving your data set. Use the pre-trained model because they already have weights, which is already learning patterns. Instead of just training from scratch, which is just 
all random weights, then you will need ten thousand of images to be able to go in and generate a good model that generalizes across your whole data. Use a pre-trained model, use some of these small models for small data sets, a few hundred to a few thousand images, then train that, make sure that you monitor the performance so you can do early stopping, don't raise resources and so on. And then with all analytics, we're taking care of most of it. Most of these things here, it's a default parameters. So you can take your data set, choose nano, small, medium model, and you'll pretty much be good to go in most examples. But it's really important that you know each of these things, what it does, how you can spot it, how you can prevent it. So that's why we went through it in this video here. Definitely make sure that you understand it so you can go in and make the best computer vision models out there. Hope you learned some. Hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.